All right. So there's a song, right? And the uh, title of the song is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Uh, and you, we probably sang it. I don't, we, you know, we don't uh, sing some of the uh, traditional hymns as much as we used to. Uh, you know, we, we kind of scatter them in there, here and there. Uh, but when you look at this uh, song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, uh, the second uh, stanza, it says, Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he, to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. So my question uh, this morning is, and again, I'm sure if you've been a believer for any length of time, you at some point, you might not remember it, but at some point you have sung this song. And have you ever thought about when it says, here I raise my Ebenezer? You know, what is Ebenezer? What, what in the world is an Ebenezer? Some of you say, I, I, I know, I know, Ebenezer Scrooge. All right. That's probably, maybe for some of you, uh, that's the only time that you've heard that word, uh, Ebenezer. But uh, we're going to talk about that word this morning, Ebenezer. All right. Father, we uh, thank you for the fact that uh, you are Ebenezer. And, and, and we will see what that means as we go through the sermon today. And Lord, I, I must confess uh, personally that for years I sang that, and I, I sang the word in there. Had no idea, no earthly idea what that meant, uh, that you are or that uh, thou my Ebenezer. And so Lord, as we examine this today, Lord, I pray that you would let us dig deep into the wells of your word. And that as we dig deep into the wells of your word, that, that we would mine riches and gold, Lord, that will come up, that we can apply to our lives, that will make us wealthier in our spirits. And Lord, help us to be able to uh, live this life that you have called us to live. As we get into your word today, Lord, we invite the congregation to come and dine, the master's calling, come and dine. You can feast at Jesus' table anytime. He who fed the multitudes and turned the water into wine. Come and dine, the master's calling. Come and dine. Feed us, Lord, at your table. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 9, it says, And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And Samuel was an offering up the burnt offering. The Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and routed them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came to Bethkar. And Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hither to hath the Lord helped us. If you will look at your notes today, I want to open the sermon by reading an introduction to this passage. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, we read that the Israelites feared an attack by the Philistines. They asked Samuel to pray to the Lord for victory over them. Samuel made an offering to the Lord and prayed for the Israelites. As Samuel was making his offering, the Philistines drew near to attack them. At that moment, my, 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 God triggered a great thunder in the heavens that caused the Philistines to be re routed in another direction. The Israelites pursued, captured, and executed them. In remembrance of this victory, Samuel erected a stone. And then the scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. 
Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shin and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. What is the meaning of Ebenezer? The meaning of Ebenezer. Uh, actually, the word Ebenezer, it comes from two Hebrew words. The word Ebon, which means stone. And the word Azer, which means to aid or help. It means a stone, and we see one right there on the screen. Uh, a stone of help. Samuel uses it in this context to, re to identify God as Israel's stone of help. And when we think about stones in the Old Testament, oftentimes uh, they were there to cause people to remember something. Uh, you may remember when Israel went into the Promised Land. They crossed the Jordan River and they placed stones in the river as a remembrance of how God parted the waters so that they could walk across. A stone of remembrance. And so here, Samuel says that God is our Ebenezer. That God is our stone of help. Has he been your Ebenezer? Can you recall a time that God stepped in when you were at the end of your road or the end of your wits, that God stepped in right on time. He was your Ebenezer. He was the stone of help. As I was reading an article about the song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, there's actually a move because people didn't understand that word Ebenezer. They struggled with that word Ebenezer. Just like many of us, we sang the song, but we didn't know what the word Ebenezer meant. So what did they do? Some people are actually trying to change the line in the song. That is, as a matter of fact, in some churches, they don't even sing that, here I raise my Ebenezer anymore. Some churches have changed it to, changed the words to, hitherto thy love has blessed me, or here by grace your love has brought me, or here I raise to thee an altar. And so this they are trying to take out this word Ebenezer because people struggle with it. But I, I'd be one to fight. I would be one to advocate and say, no, no, now that I understand what Ebenezer means, I would be one to fight and say, leave it in there because I realize that it refers to God as a stone of help. Amen. And I don't know about you, but, but I need help. I found this prayer, a morning prayer that shows that we need help. We need God's help on a daily basis. Listen to this prayer. Dear God, so far today, I've done all right. I haven't gossiped, lost my temper, been nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. But in a few minutes, I'm going to get out of bed. <laughs> But in a few minutes, I, I'm going to get out of bed, and from then on, I'm going to need all the help I can get. Amen. How many people know? You need an Ebenezer. We need an Ebenezer. There was a tradition in which the pastor would say to the people, the Lord be with you, and the people respond, and also with you. And he would go through a litany of things. And he would say, the Lord be with you. And the people would respond, and also with you. And so one occasion he got up, and there was a problem with the PA system. And he got up, and he said, there's something wrong with this microphone. And the people said, and also with you. <laughs> we need God's help. We need the Lord's help. Thank God that, that, that he's a stone of help. If you put that next slide up for me, please. What are you holding on to? 
What are you holding on to? I said to the Lord, I need your help. The Lord replied, let me help you. But what's the problem? Why, why, why did the Lord have to say, let me help you? The reason is because you're holding on to the wrong thing. You're holding on to something. And so God says, let me, let me help you. What branch are you holding on to? God says, let me help you. Now, I heard the story about a man who was walking along the side of a road that was escalating up into the mountains, and he slipped off the side of the road. And as he fell down, he was able to grab onto a branch. And he was holding on to the branch. And he said, is there anybody up there that can help me? And the voice came and said, this is God. Let go, and I'll help you. He said, is there anybody up there that can help me? A voice came and said, this is God. Let go, and I will help you. And the man said, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> what is the problem? We don't want to let go of the branches that we are holding on to. And so God says, we say to God, I need your help, God. I need you to help me, God. And God says, let me help you. Let me help you. But you hold on to your branches. You hold on to the branch of unbelief. Because God says that he can do anything. Is there anything too hard for God to do? But we hold on to the branch of unbelief because we feel more secure as we hold on to that branch of unbelief. We hold on to the branch of self-reliance. Well, I know I can do this. You know, it's almost like the little child that says, I can do it, Daddy. I can do it. Let me do it. And the parent knows full well that they can't do it. But the child wants to do it. The child says, let me do it. A lot of times we feel that we can do it in our power. We feel like we can do it in our strength. And God says, let me help you. Let me help you. But we hold on to our branch. We hold on to our branch. We hold on to the branch of sin that we struggle with many things. Maybe there might be some people that are struggling with lust. Maybe there's some people that are struggling with lying. Maybe there's some people that are struggling with laziness. And you're asking God, God, deliver me from these evil thoughts. God, deliver me from this lust. God, deliver me from a lying tongue. God, deliver me from being lazy. And we cry out to God and God wants to help us and God says let me help you but what do we do we hold on to the branch we hold on to the branch we, 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 we don't we don't guard our heart we don't guard our eyes we don't uh, we don't motivate ourselves we, we allow ourselves to wallow in whatever it is that we're we find is that thing besetting us and then we ask God to help us and God says, I want to help you. Just let me help you. There's some people that are dealing with codependency. You're holding on to the branch of codependency. It may be alcohol. It may be drugs. It may even be, and I know I'm going to make some people mad after Thanksgiving because when I point one finger, I'm pointing three back at me. It may be food. Codependency. We are holding on to things and we're asking God to help us. God, help me to get my health straight. God, help me to take off a few pounds. God, help me to do this. God, help me to do that. And God says, I want to help you. But you won't let go of that branch. And we need to move from holding on to a branch to holding on to a stone. That God is our Ebenezer. When you think about the fact that he says that he's our Ebenezer. I'm not, I'm not through with my branch here. All right. When we think about the fact that God is our Ebenezer, let's look at a couple of things that is associated with God being our Ebenezer. 
So at the end of the sermon, and uh, you can, it, I know some of the people, you know, when I pass out the notes, they just read through the whole thing. And then they, they say, well, I've already heard what you're going to say. Uh, so, you know, and some people go ahead and take a nap. That's, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, but if you, if you look at the last thing on the last page, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to challenge you today. I'm going to challenge you to think about when God has been your Ebenezer. You know, I, I think about the fact that you know, we're on this journey to the promised land with this uh, new sanctuary, right? And, and it's been a long time. We've been a, you know, it feels like you know, we've been on the journey for 40 years in the wilderness. And uh, you know, hopefully we get ready to cross the Jordan pretty soon and, 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 and walk on in. But you know, along the way, oh, praise God. And I was thinking about this as I was preparing the sermon that uh, I, I'm going to go find a stone and, uh, about, about that high. And just put it somewhere uh, in the front, in front of the building. And when people ask, you know, why is that stone there? I'm going to say this is our Ebenezer. This is how God helped us to get through this wilderness and get to the promised land like he wanted us. And, and then, then just put all the things up there that God did, that God showed his mighty hand on. You ought to have an Ebenezer at your house. You ought to have a memorial. Oh, it may not be a big stone, but there should be a memorial. And I'm challenging you today. Maybe for some of you, this is the first time that you heard this. But maybe there should be a memorial at your house to just commemorate something powerful that God has done in your life. And that as your kids and your grandkids see it and they ask the question, that you can tell them, this is my Ebenezer. This is my stone of help. When we think about Ebenezer's, what are Ebenezer's? What do Ebenezer's cause us to do? First of all, Ebenezer is a stone of worship. Look what it says in verse 9. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, so what was associated with this Ebenezer? Worship. Worship. That, that, that when you think back, it, when you think back in your life and you see the ways that God has brought you through and you establish your Ebenezer, that there ought to be a time of worship. There ought to be a time when you fall on your knees and you just say, thank you, Lord, for what you did for me. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me through. Thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way that there was an Ebenezer in your life that God did. And that is, reminds us of, uh, to worship. You know, a lot of times we, we look back and we give testimony about the great things that God has done. But let me ask you this question. How many of us stop to worship the Lord when we think about the good things that he's done? That it ought to cause you to give worth to God. It ought to cause you to put on a, one, one of your favorite praise and worship songs and just sing it out to the Lord. It ought to cause you to go to your favorite scripture and read it and then bow down and say, thank you, Lord, that your Ebenezer should be a place of worship, a stone of worship. But also notice this. Oh, man, and this is the powerful thing about Ebenezer's, right? The powerful thing about Ebenezer's is that they are stones of what? That represents miracles. They are stones that represent miracles. Look at verse 10 again. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord, my, my, my. Oh, ruminate on that. Ruminate on that. But the Lord thundered a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and routed them and they were smitten before Israel. It is a stone of miracles. And when was the last time God did something miraculous in your life? I, I gave my testimony a, a couple of weeks ago about how when I went to Lynchburg, Virginia, that God miraculously provided for me. 
And so guess what? I, I, I beat all y'all, right? I got to jump on all y'all because when I ask myself, you know, what is my Ebenezer? You know, my Ebenezer, when I saw God do something miraculous in my life, when I saw God perform something in my life that I, I knew I had no part of, that my hands were not in it at all, it was going to Lynchburg, Virginia, and how God took a fool from Durango, Colorado, to Lynchburg, Virginia, a fool for Christ, and provided housing, provided a job, when all he did, had when he arrived in there was a couple hundred dollars in his pocket. That was my Ebenezer. Saying, so let me ask you today, what, what's going to be your Ebenezer moment? And, and, and again, you know, I, I think there's something biblical about this. Somebody say, oh, well, the Bible says forget no things behind and move forward to things that are in front. Right? Yeah, it does say that. It sure does say that. And we need, you know, Paul is talking about our sins and, and, and all of our the negativity that, that's in our past or the things that we can brag about. He said, leave those things behind and press forward. But if you read the Bible, it never says forget the thing. It never says forget the things that God has done. As a matter of fact, we see more instances where we are to remember the works of the Lord, where we are to memorialize the works of the Lord. So there's nothing wrong with you having an Ebenezer because it's the place of miracles. It's a place where you saw God do a stone cold miracle, right? And you knew that you had nothing to do with it. That's your Ebenezer. And then it's a stone of remembrance. It's a stone of remembrance. Look, look what he says here in uh, verse 11. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came to Bethkar. And Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shem and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto the Lord has helped us. Hitherto, the Lord has helped us. Now, I didn't put this in the notes, and I didn't put it on the PowerPoint. But let me share with you a, a fourth thing. And the fourth thing is that it's a stone, watch this now, of renewal. A stone of renewal. Because it was at Ebenezer that the people renewed their faith they renewed their trust. They renewed their zeal for the most high God. And wouldn't it be a testimony? Wow, thank you. Now again, I'm not getting mystical on you this morning. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to get you know, supernatural on you. But I, just think about this. Wouldn't it be powerful when you backslide? And all of us backslide. We think things, we say things, we do things that are not right. You know, anybody here that have, that's never done any, thought anything, said anything, or done anything? All right. Okay, so if you raise your hand, then I'm going to call you a liar. <laughs> and, it's, and it's not me calling you a liar. That's what uh, John said in 1 John. He said, if you say that you've sinned, that you're a liar, and the truth is not in you. Okay? So uh, we've all done something. And, and, and at those moments, or maybe even just gotten discouraged. You know, maybe we've been discouraged for a long, prolonged period of time. And, and we just want to make a fresh commitment to the Lord. Wouldn't it be something if we go back to our Ebenezer and remember the powerful thing that God has done in our life? And we say, Lord, that you are a God almighty. You are a God all powerful. Lord, I've been weary, worn, and sad, and I'm coming to you today. I'm, I'm standing, I'm sitting before my Ebenezer, and I'm renewing my faith. I'm renewing my trust in you. Stone of worship, stone of miracles, stone of remembrance, and a stone of renewal. Now, as I finish the message up, I want to share with you uh, something that the Lord gave me. And the thing that the Lord gave me is, is it's all about God. That when you think about uh, Ebenezer, 
the stone of help. It's all about God. It's all about God. Ebenezer is all about God. So about the T stands for Terry. You remember the old saints. Some of, some, some of y'all don't know, know what I'm getting ready to say. The old saints, you need to tarry, right? You need to tarry before the Lord. What, what were they saying? You need to sit before the Lord in prayer. That when, when, when you think about Ebenezer and, and, and establishing Ebenezer, you need to come before God. You need to tarry before him in prayer. You need to get a hold of the, of the face of God. You know, David prayed in, in Psalm 27, you know, Lord, uh, let, let me seek thy face. Now, now, notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, like all of us pray a lot of times, he, we pray, Lord, let me uh, seek your hand, right? We want to seek God's hand because why? We know that there's something in God's hand that we want to get. David wasn't looking to get anything. He was just looking to seek the face of God. Lord, let me just come into your presence. You know, like, like, like the one lady you know, just said, if I could just get a crumb that, that falls from the table. And then the other lady said, man, if, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. If I could touch the hem of his garment. I, man, I saw this last week and this was powerful. Man, this just really spoke to my heart. And, and, and it said, uh, when you are hanging on by a thread, make sure it's the hem. of his garment. When you are hanging on by a thread, when, when, when you've been worn down, when, when the world has beat you down, when you have uh, just worn yourself out and all you got is a thread that you're holding on to, make sure that it's the hem of his garment. Because what? That lady, you know, that had that issue of blood, and, and, and she came, and she said, if I could touch the hem of his garment, what, what was she saying? If I could just come into contact with God Almighty, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know everything will be all right. And if I can tarry before the Lord, if I can tarry before my Ebenezer, I know that everything is going to be all right. Next, we see... The A, and that is you have to acknowledge your helplessness. If it's all about God, right? If Ebenezer is all about God, then you've got to throw your hand up in the air and you've got to call on God. I've experienced this, and I've shared this with the Bethany family uh, many times. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because many of you have heard this story time and time again. But all I'm going to say is I remember the time that I almost drowned, that I didn't know how to swim. And my friends told me to dive in and they would help me. And instead of, I mean, to jump in and they would help me. Instead of jumping in, I went to the 10 feet and I dove in. And I was cool. Uh, until I didn't feel my feet touch the bottom. And then when my feet didn't touch, I started to panic. And my friend, I look, you know, at the time, you know, I was uh, buffed and uh, went about 250, right? No. <laughs> right? I mean, the, the bottom line, I weighed more than most of my friends, okay? I've always been a big dude all my life. Okay. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. I got a witness out there. All right? All uh, right. And so they tried to help me, but, you know, they, they weren't any help. And so the only thing that they could do is what? Wait until I got all the fight out of me. Wait until I got all the fight out of me. Because if they tried to help me, not only was I going down, but I was taking them down too. And sometimes, you know, we got to acknowledge to God, God, I'm helpless. God, there's nothing that I can do. And when we come to the point where we say to God that there's nothing that we can do, God is our Ebenezer. God is our stone of help. We got to acknowledge, God, there's nothing I can do. And then the next thing, you know, we got to be 
broken. Broken to self-reliance. You know, th there's a, a video that I want to show. It's a four-minute video. But it's, it's, some of you probably have seen it before. But it's powerful. And the thing that I want you to see in this video is the, is the whole idea of what it means to be broken. Where you get broken to the point that you have to call on the Lord. That, 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 you know, Lord, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? I need help. Through some sort of an accident, my company shortened their accounts. The bank examiner got there today. I've got to raise $8,000 immediately. Oh, that's what the reporters wanted to talk to you about. The reporters? Yes, they called me up to, from your building and loan. Oh, there's a man over there from the DA's office, too, who's looking for you. Please help me, Mr. Potter. Help me, won't you, please? Can't you see what it means to my family? I'll pay any sort of a bonus on the loan, any interest. If you still want the building and loan, I'm... George, I'm... could it possibly be there's a slight discrepancy in the books? No, sir, there's nothing wrong with the books. I've just misplaced $8,000. I can't find it anywhere. You misplaced $8,000? Yes, sir. Have you notified the police? No, sir, I, I didn't want the publicity. Harry's homecoming tomorrow. <laughs> You're not going to believe that one. <laughs> What have you been doing, George? Um, playing the market with the company's money? No, sir. No, sir. I haven't. Oh, is it a woman, then? Uh, you know, it's all over town that you've been giving money to Violet Bick. What? <laughs> Not that it makes any difference to me, but why do you come to me? Why don't you go to Sam Wainwright and ask him for the money? I can't get a hold of him. He's in Europe. Well, what about all your other friends? Well, they don't have that kind of money, Mr. Potter. You know that. You're the only one in town that can help me. <laughs> <laughs> I've suddenly become quite important. <laughs> well, what kind of security would I have, George? Have you got any stocks? No, sir. Bonds? Real estate? Collateral of any kind? Well, I have some life insurance. $15,000 policy. Yes, uh, how much is your equity in it? $500. $500? And you asked me to lend you 8000 Look at you. You used to be so cocky. You were going to go out and conquer the world. You once called me a warped, frustrated old man. What are you but a warped, frustrated young man? Miserable little clerk crawling in here on your hands and knees and begging for help. No securities, no stocks, no bonds, nothing but a miserable little $500 equity and a life insurance policy. <laughs> You're worth more dead than alive. Why don't you go to the riffraff you love so much and ask them to let you have 8,000? You know why? Because they run you out of town on a rail. But I tell you what I'm going to do for you, George, since the uh, state examiner is still here. As a stockholder of the building and loan, I'm going to swear out a warrant for your arrest. Misappropriation of funds, manipulation, malfeasance. All right, George. Go ahead, go ahead. You can't hide in a little town like this. <laughs> yeah, Bill, this is Potter. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Glad you come. Glad you come. How about all that good spaghetti? We got everything. <laughs> God. God. Dear Father in heaven, I'm not a praying man, but you're up there and you can hear me. Show me the way. I'm at the end of my rope. I... Show me the way. Oh, God. That's brokenness. That's brokenness. And if God is going... See, this man... Y'all seen the story before. The man had money. 
he had big money. But now he was broke. And he was begging. And he, he begged human beings. And now he's coming before God. And he's begging God. He, he's broken. What is he asking God to be? He's asking God to be his what? His Ebenezer. God, please be my son of help. And you know, sometimes God lets people get down to that point where, where all earthly friends, where all worldly support breaks down and there's no one to help you. And you come to that point where the only thing you can do is call on God. And I heard somebody say that when you come to the point where you find out that God is all you have, then you'll find out that he's all you need. God is my Ebenezer. Brokenness. Brokenness. Not only brokenness, but, but the, the next thing that we see, the U actually stands for you got to unite with God's power. That, that, that it can't be about you. It can't be you doing it in your own power and in your own strength. It's about God giving you the strength to do what you need to do. You know, you've all heard the poem Footprints and how that when the guy was walking across, he started off, he saw two sets of prints. And then in the middle, he only saw one. And, and, and he said, when he got to the other side, God, I thought you said that you were going to be with me, that there were times that I only saw one set of prints. And God said to him, yeah, the one set you saw was mine because you had collapsed. You had lost all strength. You couldn't make it on your own. And it was at those times that I picked you up and I carried you so you could make it across the rest of the way. How many times have you come to that realization that you collapsed, that you fell out, that you couldn't go on in your own strength? Maybe you were dealing with a situation where it just exhausted you. It just took everything out of you. And somehow you found a way to take another step. And, and, and you wonder how in the world did I muster enough strength to take another step? And it was at that point that God, that God picked you up and God carried you. Why? Because he's your Ebenezer. God is your stone of help. So, so, so let me lighten up. Let me lighten it up a little bit. Let me lighten it up a little bit, right? You heard this before. Now, some of y'all going to get this this time. Some of you going to get this this time, right? About the guy, he went to the store, and he bought a saw, and he, was, he went back home, and he was trying to saw down a tree. And he was doing everything he could to saw that tree. And the, and the saw was just hardly scraping the bark in the tree. And he, after hours, you know, he was getting nowhere. And, and so he figured that there was something wrong with the saw. He took it back to the dealer. He said, man, look, I've been using this saw for a couple hours, and I've only just touched a little bit of bark. He said, what's wrong with this saw? And the man took the saw, and he pulled the chain. He went, rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> Y'all get it. All right, some of y'all that didn't get it the last time I told you, you got it this time. Right? The man had a power saw. And he was out there trying to saw a tree with the power saw. When all he had to do was what? Tap into the power. And that's all we have to do. If God is our Ebenezer, that we find a way to tap into his strength. We find a way to tap into his power. And at that point, when we tap into his power, he becomes our Ebenezer. And then finally, finally, the T, or, or let me say the last, the O, is for obedience to God's instructions. There's, there's so much power when you obey what God tells you to do. When, when God shows you from his word what he wants you to do. There's some of you here today, and God is speaking to you specifically. He's telling you how to make him your Ebenezer, his, your stone of strength. He's telling you to get into the word, find strength in the word. 
Because if you will do what God tells you to do, he'll take care of everything else. I've tried him, and I've found his promises are true. He's everything that he said that he would be. The finest words I know cannot begin to tell just what Jesus really means to me. He's more than amazing. He, he's more than wonderful. He's more than marvelous. He's more than miraculous could ever be. That I, I've tapped in to the source. I found that in obedience, there's power. In dependence on the Holy Spirit, there's power. And so I close. I close with this last illustration. If you go to the, there you go, right there. Watch this. There was a pilot who was flying his first flight solo. And it was foggy. And you know, he didn't feel comfortable trusting the instruments in the plane. So he radioed into the tower and, and he said that you know, he, he couldn't see and he wanted them to lead him in. But, but he also radioed in because he was worried because he remembered there was a tall pole. And he didn't want to hit the pole and he remembered that and he was nervous about it. And the voice came back over his radio and it said this, if you follow the instructions, we'll take care of the obstructions. If you follow the instructions, we'll take care of the obstructions. Obedience. Obedience. And God becomes your Ebenezer. And so I want to challenge you today as I close the message. What was your Ebenezer? What was the time of remembrance when God helped you? And so, my brothers and sisters, I'm asking the question, what branch are you holding on to today? What, what branch are you holding on to that's keeping you from allowing God to be your stone of help? From allowing to God to be your, your stone, your help, your Ebenezer. I want to encourage you today, whatever it is, muster up the courage, muster up the strength to, to break off from it. Break off from it. Let go of the branch and hold on to the stone. Hold on to the rock that doesn't move. Hold on to the rock that never rolls. God is my Ebenezer. Father, we thank you for that passage that's tucked away in the seventh chapter of first samuel one that i know i've read over many times before and it just never jumped out at me and grabbed me like it did this last time lord thank you for even the times that we sang the song uh come thou fount of every blessing and that the lord is our ebenezer and, and not having no earthly idea what that meant. And now, Lord, I say don't change the words in the song. Don't let anybody change the words to, so that it accommodates people's uh, not knowing what it meant. But let us hold on to that line in the song that talks about you being our Ebenezer, you being our stone of help. Lord, and I pray today that if there's someone here that has never received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that they would come, that they would take one of our counselors by the hand, 
and find out what it means to become a child of God. Lord, I pray that if there's someone here today that's looking for a place to fellowship, they're looking for a church home, and this is the place that you have brought them, we pray that they would come as we give the invitation today. We commit this to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand. Thank you.